what's the worst job you had before you started acting? Um, I didn't have a lot of jobs before acting, but I, I had a couple crappy ones in high school. I had one at a, a like a pizza restaurant where I had to um, like roll out the dough for the breadsticks and clean up the salad bar. And one day I just didn't show up. And I remember the manager called me like 100 times trying to get my suspenders back. I don't know if I ever gave them back. These rainbow suspenders. Yeah, that was bad. Now you have to wear those rainbow suspenders to the next job. I actually I see liked you. them. I th there's a reason why I kept them. I don't know what happened to them, though. Did you learn any really weird military lingo that stuck with you? Well, good kill. I mean, yeah, I learned a lot. I mean, I didn't know anything about anything uh, uh, regarding the drone program or, you know, and it never really occurred to me, which is hopeless on my part, but the, the side effects of, 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 you know, doing this sort of job and the post-traumatic stress disorder and then, like, being married or partnered with someone who is, I mean, it's, like, heartbreaking. I did something good today. You don't always. You want to know about my job? Can you tell me a little bit about your prep process for this? Because I read that you looked into chat rooms for people with PTSD. Why did you go that route instead of approaching military wives? Well, Andrew had uh, a lot, had done a lot of research for us and gave us options. Um, he had two drone pilots come in and talk to everyone who was working on that side of the movie. And for me, he had a lot of just printed out information about post-traumatic stress disorder and then I just went online and found like chat, I kind of eavesdropped on some chat rooms and stuff. Um, that option, the option of actually meeting someone, I think it's a very personal thing that when someone's dealing with that and I didn't want to have to like ask to meet someone, it just felt like a sort of invasion of privacy and sort of silly on my part for an actress to like, I don't know, I just didn't go that way. Combat. That's what you want to do. So you can worry the kids sick again. So you should never see them. Or me. Wait, is it so bad? What you're doing now? You're still making people safer, right? Molly definitely has her own opinions on drone warfare in relation to her husband's safety and keeping the family together, but did you ever think about how she might feel about it had she been married to somebody else? No. I mean, I, I think that she has a feeling about him being a pilot in the military because that's the only thing he's ever really talked to her about. Um, I think their marriage was a lot better when he would go away and then come back. And now that he's here and he's, you know, his, his whole persona has been stripped of him, I think that there's no communication anymore and he's very sad, um, substance, abusing substances and just a, like a shell of a human being. and. Um, she's just fighting, trying every technique she can think of to get him back, whether it's being sweet or being nice or trying to enter into conversation, just starting fights with him or whatever she can do. And I think that um, it, it's like dealing with an addict. Like she goes through just so many steps to try to get him to stop. And the only thing she can do at the end is to leave. And she's lucky that he, you know, that that, that shakes him enough. Does he ever get angry? Almost never. What happens when he gets angry? It's more quiet. I am a pilot, and I'm not flying. I don't know what it is that I am doing, but it's not flying. 